Right. So now coming to the series four of the ICAI MCQ discussion. So in this particular video, we will discuss the MCQs in the mock test paper two, right? The series two for the May 19 exams. Okay. Right. So again, on the ICAI website, when you go to the Board of Studies Knowledge Portal for their in the new course for right final advanced auditing there if you go for the mock test papers right you find the series one which we've discussed in the previous video and then you have the series two right the series two where again we have 10 mcqs of 1 1 mark and 10 mcqs of 2 2 marks right so right now this particular right mock test paper two for may 19 exams right those are the mcqs which i'll be discussing right now okay right so let's start question number one Right. While auditing the complete set of consolidated financial statements of Tulips Limited, a listed company using a fair presentation framework, Pintu and company, a chartered accountant firm, discovered that the consolidated financial statements are materially misstated due to the non-consolidation of a subsidiary. So consolidated are materially misstated due to non-consolidation of a subsidiary. The material misstatement is deemed to be pervasive to the consolidated financial statement. So pervasive means adverse opinion. Right. The effect of the misstatement on the consolidated financial statements have not been determined because it was not practicable to do so. Thus, Pintu and company decided to provide an adverse opinion for the same and further determine that there are no key audit matters other than the matter to be described in the basis for adverse opinion section. Comment whether Messrs Pintu and company needs to report under SA 701 that is communicating key audit matters in the independent auditor's report. Right, so what we study in SA 705 that whenever the auditor modifies his opinion, that is whenever he issues a qualified or an adverse, right, whenever the auditor issues a qualified or an adverse, that itself is one of the key audit matter in the audit. Right, so when you issue a qualified or an adverse, what am I saying? When you issue a qualified or when you issue an adverse opinion, this itself is a key audit matter. So there might be other key audit matters apart from this or there might not be any other key audit matter apart from this. But the auditor issuing qualified adverse, that itself is a key audit matter. But disclaimer of opinion, then there will be no key audit matter paragraph in the report. Right? So, this rule applies only for the qualified or the adverse. So, in this case, it is an adverse opinion. So, will this adverse also be a key audit matter? Yes, as I told you, qualified or adverse itself is a key audit matter. There might be other key audit matters apart from this qualified or adverse or there might not be others. Okay, right. So, Pintu and company have the option to follow SA 701, thus need not to report any key audit matter. No. SA 701 is mandatory in case of audit of listed entities. However, as there are no key audit matters other than the matter to be described in the basis for adverse opinion section, no key audit matter para needs to be stated under the audit report. SA 701 is mandatory in the case of audit of listed entities. However, as there are no key audit matters other than the matter to be described in the basis for adverse opinion section, Pintu and company shall state under key audit matters para that except for the matters described in the basis for adverse opinion section, we have determined that there are no other key audit matters to communicate in our audit report. Right, and Pintu and company is under compulsion to follow 701 as the audit is of a listed entity and shall report other key audit under key audit matter para the same matter as stated in the adverse opinion para regarding the non consolidation of a subsidiary. Right, so same matter, no, no need to report key audit matter, no, right, no key audit matter, again, no, right, so C is the correct answer. Okay, right, coming to the next one. The audit team has obtained the following by results from the trade receivable circularization of Oak Company for the year ended 2018. Name of customer, balance as per sales ledger, balance as per the customer confirmation and the comment. Right, so same amount confirmed here, different invoice raised on 28th of March. 
your again difference payment made on 30th of march your same but it says a balance of 45000 is currently being disputed and for this no reply has been received our company which of the following statements in relation to the results of the trade receivable circularization is true right so we've already seen a similar question no further audit procedures need to be carried out in relation to the outstanding balances of mn company and pn company no further procedure that is false right still we will do the further checking the difference in relation to n company represents a timing difference and should be agreed as a pre year end invoice so the invoice was raised before the year end so this matter should be considered true right so we've already found our answer the difference in relation to o company represents a timing difference and should be agreed to pre year end bank statement no right represents a timing difference no the payment has been made so you need to check with the transaction right we have to check the invoice okay the payment has been made right and due to the non reply the balance with our company cannot be verified and a different customer balance should be selected and circularized no that is also false right so the correct answer over here is b right next one mnc limited india is a subsidiary of mnc inc us llp and associates yes inc us llp and associates have been appointed by mnc limited for audit of statutory financial statements mnp and associates have been appointed as the auditors of the reporting package of mnc limited prepared for the year ended 31st march which is required for consolidation purposes mnp and associates are also the tax auditors of mnc limited what should be the format for reporting of mnp and associates on form 3cd of mnc limited right so whether the accounts of mnc limited are being audited under any other law right yes there is also the audit being conducted no have been appointed as the auditors of the reporting package yes which is required for consolidation right has also appointed to audit the statutory financial statements so are the accounts being audited under any other law yes if the accounts are audited under any other law then which form of 3 yes in tax audit do you use form 3c a right when accounts are audited under any other law then 3c a if accounts are not audited under any other law only for income tax purpose if the tax audit is being done the audit is being done then 3c b right so mnc should report as per the internal format filler mnc should report as per the format issued as per icds nothing like that mnc should report as per form 3c b no why because the accounts have been audited under any other law right so the correct answer is d right a public limited company is having its head office at mumbai and the employees from various branch offices used to visit mumbai for official meetings so the company decided to construct guest house for their employees staying in mumbai as the stay in the hotel was very expensive the management took all sanctions to construct the building and the expenditure was incurred in conformity with the rules and regulations a public limited company right all sanctions was taken and the expenditure was incurred in conformity with the rules and regulation the building was ready for use by the year 2015 on which a total expenditure of 5 crore was done but it was not used by the employees and they continued to stay in the hotel from the financial year 15 16 onwards the expenses were booked in company's profit and loss account for the upkeep and maintenance of the building and the hotel charges paid for the stay of the employees the company was having a separate internal audit department but one of the director demanded propriety audit to ensure compliance with section 186 of the company's act and ensure that the transactions represented by books are prejudicial to the interest of the company do you think that there is any need for propriety audit right so 5 crore expenditure incurred for the guest house and still the employees are staying in the hotel right so propriety audit is not required when the company is already having a separate internal audit department and these areas can be covered in the scope of internal auditor the director has no right to demand propriety audit as in the case of public limited company only government is authorized to decide on whether a propriety audit is required or not propriety audit is concerned with the scrutiny of executive decisions and actions affecting the company's financial and profit and loss situation so in the above case it is required as huge expenses has been done on construction of building and even then it was not used which has had a major impact on the company's profit and loss 
there is no need of propriety audit as the management took all the sanctions to construct the building and the expenditure was incurred in conformity with the rules and regulations right so no need for propriety audit propriety audit not required has no right to demand propriety audit all wrong the propriety audit is concerned right so c is the correct answer right next one five FEC chartered accountants was appointed as statutory auditors by KMG Limited for the audit of their financial statements. During the course of audit, the auditor noticed a fraud of rupees one twenty lakh done by an officer of the company. Right, so fraud of one crore or above. The officer sanctioned and made the payment to fake vendors for purchase of fixed assets. However, the assets were not entered in the fixed asset register. The auditor reported the fraud in his audit report to the shareholders of the company presented in the annual general meeting, but did not mention the name of the parties involved. The board of directors of the company asked ICAI to take necessary action against the auditor as he has not complied with his duty to report fraud as per section 14312. What is the duty of the auditor as per the company's act in in reporting the fraud done by the officers or employees of the company? All right. So who has done the fraud? Officers, employees of the company. What is the amount of fraud? One twenty lakh. That is one crore or above. Right. So we have two parts in one forty three twelve. Fraud less than one crore. Then you report it to the audit committee, and then it is also put in the board report. If no remedial action is taken, then the name of parties. If remedial action is taken, no name of party involved. But that is when it is less than one crore. And if it is one crore or above, then immediately, but not later than two days. Then forty. 5 days and then 15 days okay right then the for left hand side less than 1 crore that does not apply okay right as for the companies act if the amount of fraud is more than 1 lakh the auditor should have reported the matter within 2 days of his knowledge to bod audit committee of the company seeking their reply or observation within 45 days after completion of 45 days the auditor should forward his report to the central government along with the reply if any received from the board or the audit committee Right, so the first one seems right, but let us read the others also. As per Companies Act, in the course of audit, if the auditor has reason to believe that a fraud has been conducted by officer employee, the auditor should report the matter to the central government immediately. No, there is a procedure for it. Right, the auditor's duty is restricted to reporting the fraud to shareholders, and he is not required to report to the matter to BOD Audit Committee (CG) filler. The auditor can submit his report on fraud to the shareholders, but is required to mention the name of the parties involved in the fraud. Now, where we have studied it for one crore or above, right? So the correct answer is A. Okay, next one six. Prabhakar and Associates were the statutory auditors of Inverto and Company for last two years. In the current year, one of the partners, Mr. Anand Prabhakar, a qualified chartered accountant from ICAI, also got qualified as a chartered management accountant from a foreign accountancy body, CIMA. The management of Inverto and Company were glad to hear this and offered Mr. Anand to handle the management services of the company from this year. Is he allowed to take up this assignment for Inverto and Company as per the Chartered Accountants Act and the schedules there too? Right. Right, so he is what they were the statutory auditors. Can statutory auditor provide the management services also? No, right. Also, one forty-four. No auditor not to render certain services. But this is also they are asking from the Chartered Accountants Act viewpoint. Yes, being a qualified management accountant within their group, Prabhakar and Associates should take this assignment. Yes, Mr. Anand can cover the management services, and another auditor from the firm can cover the statutory audit of Inverto Company. No, the management services cannot be provided by the firm who currently is the statutory auditor of Inverto and Company. No, Anand is newly qualified management accountant who does not have enough experience, and hence should not take up the management service assignment filler. And can he accept the assignment? Yes, yes, no. That is no, no. He cannot accept, right? So, which is the correct answer? C. Okay, right. Yes. Question number seven. One afternoon in the first week of June 2018, there was a heated discussion, as if they are writing a story. You know, one one afternoon. in the first week of june so somewhere say 3rd 4th of june there was a heated discussion between the audit engagement partner of shah and associates and the finance director of pecker and company 
the discussion was mainly on non cooperation of the company staff to provide the relevant information to the auditors probably you can visualize such a scene which you would have experienced during your articles right the staff thought that the auditors were a hindrance in their routine work the finance director called an urgent meeting to discuss the removal of the auditor shah and associates the finance director called an urgent meeting within the next week the partner of shah and associates was called and informed that they are no more the auditors of pecker and company comment if the removal of the auditor was proper in accordance with the companies act 2013 right so removal of auditor before the expiry of his term we know it requires the prior approval of the central government yes the finance director was correct in the procedure of the removal of auditor by a simple board meeting discussion out no the removal of auditor before the expiry of the term should be done with the prior permission of the central government seems right but let's read the other two once appointed the board of directors cannot remove the present auditors of the company they can remove but there is a procedure right but once the board cannot remove no yes pecker and company is not a government company hence the board of directors can remove the auditor by themselves filler right so they can be removed but only with the prior approval of the central government right so the correct answer is b next one garg limited has declared dividend of 9% on 15th april for 2018 the company has not paid or the war not paid or the warrant in respect thereof has not been posted till 30th of june right so 15th april 15th may 15th june and now 30th june to any shareholder who is who is entitled to the payment of dividend which of the following is correct in respect of the effect of non payment of dividend right so once the dividend if it has been declared and it is not been paid right within 30 days then what is the punishment what is the fine in that case interest at the rate of 18% per annum now this has to be in your database and technically you should be knowing this right you have to know this fact garg limited shall be liable to pay simple interest at the rate of 15% the second one shall be liable to pay simple interest at the rate of 18% during the period for which the default continues if a company can still make the payment of dividend by 31st of july with no interest can make the payment by 15th of july with no interest applicable no right these two no and the rate of interest is not 15% it is 18% so the correct option is b next one tsv and company chartered accountant is an audit firm having two partners t and v The firm TSV and Company is already holding an appointment as auditors of 36 public company, and none of the partners hold any company audit in their personal capacity or as partners with another firm. TSV and Company has been offered the appointment as auditors of seven more private limited companies. Of the seven, so how many more audits they can accept? Four, no, 36 already accepted. Now, how many they are proposed to be appointed as in seven? of the seven one is the company with a paid up share capital of 150 crore right so paid up share capital less than 100 crore is not to be counted this is 150 crore so this will have to be counted five are small companies as per the companies act where no not counting in the limit and one is a dormant company again no counting in the limit so all the seven they can accept one com private company five small company and one dormant company determine the number of companies out of seven for which tsv and company can accept the appointment as an auditor all seven right they can accept the audit next one 10 your firm has been appointed as statutory auditor by a nationalized bank for 2017-18 your senior advised you to check all the standard assets shown in the balance sheet as on 31st of march while verification you observed that one of the accounts was regularized on 28 march okay we have in rbi prudential norm a concept of accounts regularized near about the balance sheet date okay right regularized on 28 of march for which the interest and installment amount was overdue from the quarter to the september 2017 the account was regularized after the repayment of overdue interest and installment amounts was done on 26th of march only the la on last day of the financial year was reckoned as the date of account becoming an npa by the bank right so 28 march it was paid so that's why as on 31st of march it was not an npa as a statutory auditor will you agree with the bank policy 
as the interest charged in the account was overdue for more than 90 days from the end of the quarter it should be classified as an npa and should be considered as substandard asset for the balance sheet as on 31st of march as the overdue interest and installment amount was paid before the balance sheet date there is no reason to classify the account as an npa because now it has become standard the auditor should not agree with the bank's policy to regularize the account before the balance sheet date as overdue interest indicates more than normal risk attached to the business no we have situations of accounts regularized near about the balance sheet date bank can regularize the account before the balance sheet date but should ensure that the amount was been paid through genuine sources right we said there should be no inherent weakness in the data right through genuine sources and not by sanction of additional facilities and the account remains in order subsequently right so d is the correct option right so continue should be considered as substandard no right overdue installment and there is no reason to classify no right should not agree with the bank more no than normal risk attached no right but this is talking about the regularized thing so if you see that regularized word is coming over here okay right so that completes the 1 1 mark now coming to the 11th one bc limited is in the business of manpower consulting the company has huge cash and bank balance including fixed deposits with the banks during the course of audit of the financial statements of the company for 2017 auditors circulated independent bank balance confirmations all right the auditors received all the balance covering fixed deposit confirmations independently auditors observed that the fixed deposit balance as per the independent balance confirmation did not match with the book balances in some case management produced the fixed deposit receipts to the auditors wherein the balances of fixed assets matched with the balances as per the books how would you the, how should the auditor deal with this matter right so whatever the bank has confirmed and whatever is the balance in the book that is not telling but company has managed to show the certificates for the same right auditor should qualify the audit report in respect of differences in book balance of fixed deposit via the versus this was the independent balance confirmation auditor should consider the fixed deposit certificates produced by the management and basis that any difference in book balance of fixed deposits with service the independence balance confirmation should be ignored ignore the never right auditor should consider the documentation provided by the management that is the fd certificates however independent balance confirmation is also required to be considered by the auditor which shows various difference the auditor should obtain balance confirmation again no auditor should consider the documentation provided by the management that is the fd certificate however independent balance confirmation is also required to be considered by the auditor which shows various difference the auditor should look to perform alternative procedures and basis that the matter should be looked at right so you should perform alternative procedures on based on that the matter should be looked at okay right so directly auditor should qualify the report no first you perform the alternative procedures right so the correct answer is d right coming to 12 sbc private limited appointed mr vijay chartered accountant as auditor of the company for 1718 while verifying the accounts mr vijay noticed that the company has neither made any provision for accrued gratuity liability nor obtained the actuarial valuation there on Mr Vijay obtained the actuarial valuation and included the matter in his audit report to the company's board of directors mentioning the amount of li accrued liability not provided for right so what did he notice that the company has not made any provision for accrued gratuity liability nor obtained the valuation so Mr Vijay obtained the valuation and included the matter in his audit report to the BOD so first he reported it to the BOD mentioning the amount of liability not provided for the board agreed with the auditor's observation and the amount of liability quantified by him right so it's like a misstatement identified by the auditor he first reported it to the board of directors the board agreed with the auditor's observation and the amount of liability quantified by him but the auditor didn't disclose the matter in his audit report to the members to the shareholders one of the members raised an objection <clears throat> on the audit report stating that it does not present a true and fair view as even though the company has not maintained proper books of account as per accounting standards the auditor has not qualified his report 
whether the auditor is required to give a qualified opinion in his report to the members on non-provision of gratuity in company accounts when the same has already been included in the report to the company BOD. Right, so is there a misstatement? Yes. Has it been reported to the management first? Yes. Has the management taken the corrective action? Has the management taken the corrective action? Yes, the management has agreed. Had they not agreed, we would have qualified. But here in this case, they have agreed. Right. So, the as the auditor has already disclosed the matter of non-provisioning in his report to the company BOD, there is no need to disclose the same in the report to members under section 143 as it is already disclosed. Not because it's already disclosed. It has been disclosed and it has been agreed upon by the management. That is why. Okay, non-provisioning for <coughs> accrued liability is in contravention to the applicable accounting standard AS15. Therefore, the auditor should qualify his report to the members through a paragraph on failure of management to quantify the amount of liability. The auditor should revise the accounts as per the actuarial valuation obtained by him and the revised accounts only should be presented before the board and members. The auditor is not required to qualify report what revised accounts, nothing. Right. Under section 143 of the Companies Act, the auditor should qualify his report to the members only when the matter reported by the auditor is answered in the negative or with a qualification by the board. In the above case, the board agreed with the auditor's observation, so there is no need to qualify the report. So had the board not agreed, then the auditor would have qualified the report. Right. So auditor should qualify his report. No. Right. The has already disclosed the matter. So there is no need to disclose. No. Right. So as the matter has been agreed upon by the members, what does it say? No need to qualify the report. Right. Come to 13. AHKPL Limited is an unlisted company in the business of real estate following AS. The company recognizes revenue on the basis of percentage completion as per AS7. The company has various residential and commercial projects at different locations for which separate profitability statements are prepared by the management. Profitability statements are based on estimated cost of the project. While reviewing the profitability statement, statutory auditors observe that the profitability of the projects have been fluctuating significantly year on year and the prime reason for that is the change in the estimated cost. As per the auditors, frequent changes are made by the management in the estimated cost to increase the percentage completion and through which revenue and profit numbers are manipulated. The auditors are not satisfied with the profitability statement of two major projects which account for 50% of the total turnover of the company. Management tried to explain the auditor saying that the changes would happen because of the dynamics of the industry which have been significantly changing and are unfavorable to the industry as a whole. All of this is leading to changes in the estimated cost. How should the auditor deal with this matter? Right. So what does it say? Well, the statutory auditors observe that profitability of the projects have been fluctuating significantly year on year. And the prime reason for that is the change in the estimated cost. Right. So because they are not able to ascertain the cost, there is a lot of frequent changes right, to increase the percentage completion. Right. Management view seems reasonable. Estimated costs are only estimates which are subject to changes and hence auditor should drop this matter. Drop, ignore, though very rarely. Okay. The auditor view seems reasonable and if the management does not agree, right, the auditor should issue qualified reports. Right? The auditor's view seems reasonable. The auditor should consider the impact of the adjustment on the financials and if the impact is pervasive, the auditor should issue an adverse opinion. The auditor should consider the impact on the adjustment on the financial statements and may take the adjustment to unadjusted entry in the management representation later and basis that issue a clean report. No, 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 no. Right. So now competition is between qualified and adverse. The auditor view seems reasonable and if the management does not agree, the auditor should issue qualified opinion. No, right. We cannot see the view manage auditor view seems reasonable. Right. What does it say? Because not satisfied with the profitability statement of two major projects which account for 50% of the total turnover. So this is going to be material and pervasive. 
right the auditor should consider the impact of the adjustment on the financial statements and if the impact is pervasive the auditor should issue an adverse opinion okay right so the correct answer is c right coming to 14 OPP and company LLP is the statutory auditors of ABBA Private Limited. The company has an annual turnover of 1000 crore and profit of 250 crore. The company is planning to get listed next year. The company appointed OPP and company LLP as new auditors to have a fresh look on their financial system so that the financial reporting can be improved wherever required. During the course of the audit, the auditors have been facing a lot of challenges to obtain evidence and have discussed the same with the management. Now the auditors are determining the implication. Please suggest which one of the following should not be the implication in respect of this matter. Should not be the implication. Right. If the auditor concludes that the possible effect on the financial statements of the undetected misstatements, if any, could be material but not pervasive, he shall issue a qualified opinion. Seems okay. Right? Mate ma unable to obtain evidence, material but not pervasive, qualified. If the auditor concludes that the possible effect on the, fin effect on the financial statements of the undetected misstatements could be material and pervasive, so that a qualification would be inadequate to communicate the gravity of the situation, the auditor shall withdraw from the engagement where practicable and possible under applicable law or regulation. So whenever there is unable to obtain evidence, material and pervasive, we either withdraw or we issue disclaimer. So here they are saying withdraw from the engagement. Okay. If the auditor concludes that a possible effect on the financial statements of undetected misstatements could be material and pervasive so that a qualification would be inadequate, the auditor shall withdraw from the engagement. If withdrawal from the audit before issuing the report is not practicable or possible, then disclaim an opinion on the financial statements. So it seems okay, either withdraw or disclaim. If the auditor concludes that the possible effect could be material and pervasive and qualification would be inadequate, the auditor shall withdraw. If withdrawal from the audit before the report is not practicable, report the matter to the ROC. No, report the matter to the ROC. So which should not be the implication in respect of this matter? The D1. Right? So D is the correct answer. Right? These three correct options. Last one, this cannot be possible. This is not possible. Okay, right. So now coming to question number 15. Yellow Steels Limited was engaged in the business of manufacturing and selling steel products. Right. The company was having sales office at different locations in and outside India. The company decided to have a sales office at Kanpur on their own land. A managing committee of some officers from the company was formed in order to get a building constructed at land in Kanpur. Budget of rupees 35 crore was approved by the company for the same and it proposed to complete the construction within two years. 32 crore were already released by the company within a year of start of the project and the managing committee raised a demand for the 5 crore for further payment to the vendor. The management of Yellow Steel wants to get the verification done of all the expenses incurred on site and identify the reasons for increase in construction cost. Which of the following will suffice the purpose of the management? Right, so building to be constructed, 35 crore budget, 32 crore already incurred within one year of start and now demanding for the 5 crore for payment to the vendor. The management wants to know the reasons for increase in construction cost, which will serve the purpose of the management. The management should go for operational audit as it will evaluate the efficiency, effectiveness and the economy of operation. The management should get a forensic audit in order to rule out any possibility of fraud or any other financial crime. A financial due diligence is required to be done as no fraud has been reported and the management just wants to analyze the books of account and other financial matters pertaining to the financial matters at site. A management audit should be done to ensure that the increase in the cost of production is not due to any discrepancies in the formulation of the objectives, plans and policies of the top management. Right. So four options, operational audit, forensic audit, the financial due diligence or the management audit, which one to go for? Right. So forensic audit, so there is no legal implications of and the matter is not in the courts of law. So no forensic audit. 
management audit also you know because it is not we don't want to do the audit of the decision making we want to check the construction cost right so no management audit also should go for operational audit as it will evaluate the effectiveness efficiency and economy of operation we don't want to see right now efficiency effectiveness mainly we want to see only the economy right so financial due diligence is required to be done so that no fraud so this covers a part of fraud also though not forensic audit but type of investigation due diligence and the management just want to analyze the books of account and other financial matters pertaining so they say we don't we are not saying you've done fraud anything we just want to look into the financial matters right pertaining to the right other pertaining to the financial matters at the site right so the correct answer is the financial due diligence okay right coming to 16 app limited is listed on national stock exchange in india post audit rotation kyp and company llp have been appointed as the statutory auditors of app limited the company has a pending litigation in respect of service tax matter which has been going on for a very long time now and exposure of the company towards that litigation is very significant the new auditors got the exposure of this case evaluated by involving their in house tax ex tax experts who have shared a view that the exposure of the company would be medium as per the requirements of the accounting standard medium exposure would be considered as a possible impact for which probability is 50% the company has been disclosing this as a contingent liability in the previous year however the new auditors are of the view that this is a significant matter that requires users attention by disclosing this in the financial statements and that it is of such importance that it is fundamental to the users understanding so fundamental to users understanding reminds me of sa 706 emphasis of matter paragraph further there is a material uncertainty in respect of this matter demand raised by service tax department basis this the auditor wants to include an emphasis of matter paragraph in their report management is of the view that since this has was not reported by previous auditors as eom hence it would not be included by new auditor also and also being a listed company it is not appropriate to include eom in the first year of the audit by a new firm okay please suggest which of the following option is correct eom should be included by new auditor eom should not be included by new auditor if the previous auditors have not given that out eom should not be given however there should be a disclosure of the matter in the financial statements and also the fact that the auditors are in the first year of audit and this matter requires detailed evaluation no auditor should qualify the report instead of eom no right so the correct option would be a right eom should be included by the new auditors right so sometimes the biggest one is the correct answer sometimes the smallest one is the correct answer this analysis does not help but just telling you okay right so that was 16 the answer is a coming to the next one nt22 group is a large group comprising of 22 subsidiary companies 14 associate companies and 19 joint ventures NT Limited is the holding company which is also listed on Bombay Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange. The group prepares its consolidated financial statements every quarter for various reporting requirements SEBI as Stock and Exchange Board of India <coughs> right stock exchanges registrar of companies in India and others. The turnover of the group is 15000 crore and many of its components have significant operations at the stand alone level. right the group is audited by one audit firm sima and company llp for the purpose of group audit of the current year the auditors have considered performing testing of journal entries across the group to address the significant risk however the auditors are facing challenge to perform this audit procedures across the group because of the volume and limitation of resources please suggest the correct option in respect of this matter right so the group is audited by one audit firm so no different auditor for the component and what does it say the auditors have considered performing testing of journal entries across the group to address the significant risk right the group auditors have a choice to test journal entries of the components which is also backed up by the auditing standards the group auditors must test all journal entries of all the components right the group auditors need not test journal entries of components requiring analytical response at group level 
the group auditors need not check test journal entries of components cropped with comprehensive approach right so the group auditors have a choice to test journal entry no it's not discretion the group auditor must test journal entry no it is not compulsory also the group auditors need not test journal entry of components requiring analytical response at the group level right because the entire group is being audited by one auditor only right what does it say need not test journal entry require only analytical at the group level and the group auditor need not test journal entries of the components scope with comprehensive approach right so scope with comprehensive rather than comprehensive analytical would be more correct right so requiring analytical response at the group level right next one 18 Raja Ram is appointed as an internal auditor for finance company with 15 branches across the states. He needs to conduct a branch visit in the coming week. Based on management inputs and past year audit reports, he has shortlisted four branches. Raja so total 15 he shortlisted four. Raja Ram is not able to decide which branch he should prioritize as an internal auditor. Based on the branch information given below, which branch should Raja Ram visit first? Right, so Sonpur, Chandpur, Rampur, and Lakshmanpur. Right, so Sonpur, fifteen people, two instances. So fifteen people working over there. Maybe we can take it that way. Two instances of fraud in the last year. Regional manager present in the branch for supervision. Chandpur, twelve people, no fraud, no visit by internal auditor in last two years due to set processes. Rampur, eighteen people, no fraud. Six of twenty twenty employees are new joiners in the last six months. Newly opened branch, and Lakshmanpur ten people, one fraud in the last year. All ten are long term employees of the company. No audit visit in the last year, right? No audit visit in the last year, right? So now first one two instances of fraud in the last year. Regional manager present in the branch for supervision. So there is some higher level person sitting over there. So I don't think this will come first in the list. <clears throat> right 12 people no fraud no visit by internal auditor in the last years due to set processes so no visit by internal auditor but also there is no fraud okay so again as there is no fraud you can you would you are going to go to all four but which going first right so as there is no fraud no going over there first right then no fraud 6 of 20 employees are new joinees in the last 6 months newly opened branch Right, so again over here, no fraud. Okay, here there is fraud, but there there is a regional manager who is sitting over here. Here no fraud, and what does it say? Newly opened branch. Right, so it is just startup. Okay, and Lakshmanpur ten people, one fraud in the last year. All ten are long term employees of the company. No audit visit in the last year. Right, so long term employees of the company, so they would be knowing the system in and out. Right, they would have developed an upper hand over the system, so they also might be knowing, you know, how to override the system. So here, rather, there is already one fraud taken place, and plus no audit done in the last, no audit visit in the last year. Right, so rather, Lakshmanpur should be the first one. Right, priority wise, that should be the first one. Okay, right, that is eighteen. Right, then nineteen. Yes, don't pay for fun. Is a startup who is trying to get funding from investors. Right, don't pay for fun as a startup trying to get funding from investors. One of the investors has expressed interest in looking at the investment proposal, but has insisted that the proposal for yes, proposal also contains DPFs, financial statements, which are audited by an independent auditor. So the investor says, I want financial statements which should be audited by an independent auditor. Right, DPF engages C Abhishek to conduct an independent audit, and Abhishek issues an engagement letter for the independent audit to the owner of DPF, which is duly acknowledged. DPF, while finalizing the financial statements, is facing some difficulties, so its owner requests Abhishek to provide advice as it needs to furnish the proposal to the investor first. Since Abhishek is already engaged in the audit of transaction, he assists DPF's accounting officer, and the financial statements are finalized. Abhishek also completes the audit and presents the audit report, which is provided to the investor. Has the condition set by the investor been fulfilled? Right. So he said, "I want an independent audit done." And here, this fellow, what he has done, he has provided advice as it needs to furnish. Yes, is already engaged. He assists the accounting officer, and the financial statements are finalized. No, the investor has asked for independent audit. 
ये सर थी ऑडिट रिपोर्ट इज इशूड आफ्टर प्रॉपर ऑडिट एंगेजमेंट लेटर एंड ऑल्सो एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट नो बिकॉज अभिषेक डिड नॉट चेंज द टर्म्स ऑफ एंगेजमेंट टू इंक्लूड द एडवाइस पार्ट अलॉन्ग विद द इंडिपेंडेंट ऑडिट इन ऑर्डर फॉर हिज ऑडिट रिपोर्ट टू बी इंडिपेंडेंट ही शुड हैव चार्ज सेपरेट फी फॉर द एडवाइस आउट right dpf has hired a qualified ca to conduct the audit not only there is no evidence to suggest that the auditor allowed any misrepresentation but the auditor himself advised pdf dpf in finalizing the financial statements which speaks highly of the quality of financial statements right maker checker has to be separate here the maker checker is only giving advice for the preparation of financial statements Yes, yes. As the audit report is issued after proper audit engagement letter and examination, that does not make it an independent audit as he has given advice. So no, the investor has asked for an independent audit. Simple, right? So again, the smallest one is the correct one. Okay, right. I'm just developing your skills for writing the MCQ answers in the exam. Right? We are just being together and reading, is yes, studying it, going through it. I'm reading it for you. Okay, right. If the auditor has determined that there is a significant going concern uncertainty at PQR Limited due to the requirement to refinance the company's debt, discussions with the management and the auditor's evaluation of the management's plan for future action in relation to its going concern assessment have revealed that plans to raise new equity finance are realistic and likely to deal with the problem. is it appropriate for pqr limited to prepare its financial statements on a going concern basis right so is there a material uncertainty yes are there management plans yes right is it the that there is a significant going concern uncertainty due to the requirement to refinance the company's debt right discussions with the management and the auditors evaluation for future action in relation to going concern that there is plan to raise new equity finance are realistic no pqr cannot prepare its financial statements on going concern because a significant uncertainty exists no just because there is a significant uncertainty you cannot say you cannot prepare on going concern Yes, PQR can prepare its financial statements on going concern. However, the auditor is required to express a qualified opinion. Qualified? No, because there is a management plan which is realistic. Yes, PQR can prepare its financial statements on a going concern basis. No additional disclosure is necessary. No. Yes, material uncertainty exists, but management explanation found adequate. What do we say? Unmodified with an emphasis of matter paragraph. So no disclosure. No, we don't agree. Right. So yes, PQR Limited can prepare its financial statements on going concern. However, the disclosure of both the nature of the uncertainty and the management plan is required. Right. So is this correct? Yes, this is the correct option. right so this completes the mcqs in the mock test series is the second mock test for papers the second one right for the may 19 exams right thank you so much